Hello Summoners and welcome back. Today we are going to go over the top 5 tips for climbing in solo queue. This list will be specifically comprised of 5 topics and 5 tips that should help you no matter what type of player you are. So rather than looking at specific tips for mid lane or top lane or specific tips for a champion, we are going to look at overall tips to help you climb the ladder and win more ranked games. So anyway, let's get into the list. Topic number one, we'll be talking about session length. All five of these topics and tips are coming from a challenger player, Moriarty, who works here at Mobilitics. Moriarty, or Adam, recommends that you have two options when it comes to playing solo queue. If you have overall less time, consider playing a set of three, where if you lose the set, you need to stop playing and take a break. So if you go one and two in your set, or zero oh and three, then just don't play, take a break. However, if you win the set, so you go 2-1 or 3-0, then play one more set and continue until you lose that. So if you're feeling good after a set and you were 2-1 and one and maybe just unlucky game and you go 2-1 and one again, keep playing, keep grinding if you have the time. Until you lose two games out of a three game set, then you're okay to keep going. If you do have a bit more time and it's a weekend and you can have all day to play and you want to grind, consider playing a set of five. So for this one, the rules are slightly different because you're going to be playing a lot more games. As soon as you lose even one game, just stop and take a break. Even if it's a very short break, just to go get some water, just to go get some food, whatever it may be. So even if you lose the very first game in the set and you start off 0-1, take a second, take a step back, then queue up and start again. Play your set of five. If you go three and two in your set, keep playing, keep going. If you go two and three or one and four, then you really should stop and consider not playing for the rest of the day. Let's face it, we have all struggled with tilt and tilt is a big problem and is part of the reason why people don't climb. The reason that this set system or the session length tends to work pretty well and has good results is because it allows you to reset your mental. The next topic we're going to talk about is dodging games or dodging champion select because many people just don't really do this correctly or understand how it works. Dodging the champion select does cause you to lose LP or league points but you do not lose MMR or matchmaking rating which in turn is the most important. One of the best ways to look at dodging is thinking about it in terms of you get one free dodge per day for yourself. You only lose 3 LP in 6 minutes of time so if there is a champion select troll you save yourself 25 minutes of frustration as they run down mid or something to that nature. These are the following things that you should use your daily dodge on. If you get auto-filled and it's an off-roll that you often lose on, so if you get placed top lane and you never play top lane and you always lose top lane, just dodge. Your main champion is banned and you're a one-trick and have no good other options for this game, so if your teammates or the enemy team banned your kindred and you only play kindred, then maybe consider dodging that game. Your team has no main role players on a carry, so if somebody says that they're a mid lane player, but they've been auto-filled to top lane, and then they don't play a carry, and then there's just not really a good team composition, you're not really big on your team's comp, consider dodging that one. Lobby flamers or lobby trolls, somebody says they're gonna run down mid, of course you're gonna wanna get out of that. And lastly, if you do look up somebody's profile and they seem tilted in champion select, and then you realize they've lost more than six games in a row and they're on a big tilting loss streak, then you might wanna leave. Topic number three will be going over research and preparation, and this has to do with specific champions that you might play, the things that you should absolutely do before you take them to ranked. Firstly, one of the easiest pregame things that you can do is find the proper build. Don't be that guy who's asking in the middle of the ranked game, what do I build third item? Go to a one trick for that champion, find their profile, go to the highest win rate, highest pick rate build, figure out what people are building and then adjust it to the game state. Every champion does have some kind of ability combo. For example, Bran needing to hit his E or his W first, then into the stun with his Q. If you didn't know that, if you were first timing him, maybe you wouldn't realize just how you're supposed to combo your abilities. Even easy champions have some way and some order to use their abilities, so make sure you have this down and nailed. Practice last hitting or a jungle clear in the practice tool as well. Every champion has different auto attack animations and basic attack animations, so if you're not used to a champion's autos and you're not able to keep up in CS simply because you're not used to the animation, then that's a big problem and is a really easy fix. The same logic can be applied to the jungle clear. You might think a champion is easy, but do you know what route they're supposed to take? On Xin Zhao, are you supposed to do Raptors level 2? Are you supposed to start the Machete or the Talisman? 
All these things are really basic and vital to learning a champion, and if you don't know how to do this, then they shouldn't be something in your ranked pool. This one will be the most time consuming, but lastly, make sure you check out at least one VOD or one replay of somebody playing what you want. So if you want to learn how to play Jace mid and that's your flavor of the month, go watch somebody who's played Jace mid before. Watch at least one game. See how they play the laning phase, see what items they start, how they control the mid game, anything like that. All these things are really important to learn. Tip number four, let's go over champion pool. So make sure your pick ban strategy is kind of like an LCS team, but you can adjust it to be more like solo queue. So on your main role, unless you are a one trick, you should have three champions mastered. You should have three very comfortable champions. So if you play mid lane, have your TF, have your Cassidy, have your Ari, and just be ready and go. Your absolute number one main and the thing that you maybe one trick on and off could be your blind pick champion. So if you are forced onto the roll, you know what to pick. Have one backup champion in case it's picked or banned, and then have one counter pick or situational pick. A great example is Cassidy for Moriarty. Moriarty specifically picks Cassidy against the matchups that he knows. He will never blind pick Cassidy ever, but the reason why he does so well on him is specifically in a matchup when he can take Cassidy, he does it and he wins most of the time. As for off roll, have yourself one or two situational picks or one or two blind picks for your off roll. You need to be able to play at least two off roll champions. Quickly talking about some tips for one tricks, make sure that if you are a one trick, this means that obviously you're only going to play this champion and you only only specialize in one champ, queue for an off roll that your champion can be played in. So if you are a Jace main, don't queue for top and support, because if you get support and you're playing support Jace, it's not going to be as effective if you queue top mid, and then just play Jace mid. On to the final topic that I want to go over today, meta picks versus comfort picks. So this will be looking at the comparison between how often should you play the things that are comfortable to you, and how often should you play the things that are meta, or that are doing very well in the current meta. The first tip that we can give you is number one, if your core pool of champions are above 55% win rate, you don't really need to switch to meta champions. However, if things start to go awry and things aren't working for you and your core pool of champions drops to 50 to 51, you should consider swapping to meta champions. So if your Hecarim just no longer starts to work, then you might want to look into the Graves and the Zinza. If your core pool of champions drops significantly below 50%, not just 48 and 49, if your main Jax is now at a 39 to 40% win rate, then you definitely need to swap to meta champions and start learning them. When learning meta champions, do your research and do the prep, just like tip number three. And a big tip is to give the champion 10 to 20 games. And at this point, if you're not able to grasp the champion and you don't feel comfortable and it doesn't show in the win rate department as well, then it's okay to move on after that. You can use our Mobilitics tier list as a great tool to know which current meta champions there are, and the best place to always start if you're learning a new champion is to go to easy or simple difficulty and look at S tier. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for the list. We hope this topic of top 5 tips from a challenger player for climbing solo queue were helpful for you, and we hope some of this high level stuff was nice as well. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and check out the product at mobilitics.gg.